Today we're going to be talking about how to use power series to estimate a definite integral. And in this particular problem, we've been given the definite integral on the interval 0 to 0 0.1 of the function x times arctan of 3x. Remember that arctan is the same as tangent to the negative 1 or the inverse tangent function. And as a reminder, I've written the formula for the power series of arctan of x. Now, I'm going to assume for the purpose of this problem that we already have this formula. If you don't have it and you're not sure what the power series representation of arctan of x is, you can always go and plug in values for x, 1, 2, 3, 4, to start writing out the terms of this series. And then based on the terms of the series, identify a power series representation for whatever portion of your function you're unsure about. For now, we're just going to assume that we have this formula because this is a somewhat well-known power series formula for this inverse tangent function here. Keep in mind that this arctan of x power series formula assumes that the value inside of this arctan function is just x. It takes this value of x here and puts it into the power series representation right here. Well, you'll notice that our function is similar to arctan of x, but it's different in the sense that not only do we not just have an x here, we've got a 3x inside of our arctan function, but we also have this x value multiplied out in front of our arctan function. What we need to do is modify this formula for the power series of arctan of x to be a power series for x arctan of 3x. So the way we're going to do that is by first dealing with the 3x portion. We're going to go ahead and write a formula for arctan of 3x, not just arctan of x. And all we have to do, of course, is just replace the x in this power series representation with 3x. So we're just going to plug 3x right into our power series representation like this. We're going to leave everything else the same. So we're just replacing x with 3x. Now all we need to do is multiply x out in front of both sides. So you can think of essentially multiplying both sides of this equation by x. And what we get on the left hand side is x arctan of 3x, which is perfect because that matches our original function up here. And over on the right hand side, that's going to be equal to the infinite sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 3x to the 2n plus 1. Here's where we multiply by our x. We've got basically x to the first power here in the numerator that we just multiplied by. And in the denominator, we still have 2n plus 1. At this point, we're going to need to use our algebra to simplify this power series representation of x arctan of 3x. What we can do is this quantity 3x raised to the 2n plus 1, we can separate this into two separate terms. We can say 3 to the 2n plus 1 times x to the 2n plus 1. So we can get rid of these brackets here like this, and instead of 3x combined like this, we'll just end up with 3 raised to the 2n plus 1 power times x raised to the 2n plus 1 power. Now we have x raised to the 2n plus 1 times x to the first power. And when you have terms that are multiplied together that have like bases, they both have a base of x, you can add the exponents together. So 2n plus 1 plus 1 is 2n plus 2. And what we can do is just get rid of this x plus 1 here and we'll just be left with 2n plus 2 like this for the exponent on our x variable. Now we have a power series representation simplified for x arctan of 3x. Remember that we're trying to use this to estimate the value of this integral up here. So our next step once we have this representation is to integrate both sides. So all we're going to do then is integrate both sides, and we'll pretend here that we've written a dx like this. We're going to integrate both sides, dx like this. And now the left-hand side we're going to leave alone because we've got that as our original function up here. We're just going to use the right-hand side to estimate this value over here on the left. So we're going to say the integral of x arctan of the quantity 3x dx is going to be equal to this integral over here on the right hand side. Now keep in mind that we're integrating with respect to x. We have this dx notation out here, we're integrating with respect to x. What that means is that this negative 1 to the n power, 3 to the 2n plus 1, and 2n plus 1 here in the denominator, 
They're all constant coefficients on this x to the 2n plus 2 term here. We're treating n as a constant, so all of these terms involving x here are just going to stay right where they are. To integrate x to the 2n plus 2, this is the same as integrating, for example, if we just had x to the third power. The way that we would integrate this, we would add 1 to the exponent to get x to the fourth, and then we would divide by our new exponent, so we get 1 fourth x to the 4. Well, we're going to do the same thing here. When we add 1 to the exponent, we'll get 2n plus 2 plus 1, which is going to give us 2n plus 3, and then we'll need to divide by our new exponent here. So the result of this integral is just going to be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. That notation is going to stay, but the integral notation is going to go away. We'll be left with negative 1 to the n power times 3 to the 2n plus 1. And here now, instead of x to the 2n plus 2, we'll get x to the 2n plus 3. 3, and in our denominator, our 2n plus 1 is going to stay, 2n plus 1, but we have to divide by our new exponent. The new exponent is 2n plus 3, so we divide by that exponent, and then because we took the integral, normally we would have to add c to account for the constant of integration, but remember that this is really going to be a definite integral. Whenever you take a definite integral, you don't have to add the constant of integration, so we'll go ahead and leave it off for now, knowing that in our next step, we're going to turn this into a definite integral. In order to turn it into a definite integral, all we really have to say, we we can go ahead and add our limits of integration 0 and 0 0.1 here to our left hand side and over on the right hand side we're just going to say that we're going to be evaluating this on the interval 0 to 0 0.1. Now the easiest way to evaluate this right hand side is going to be to plug in a few terms for n. So we'll plug in n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. to get the first several terms of this series. Then we'll evaluate on our interval 0 to 0 0.1. So we're going to say that this right hand side here, I'm going to bring it into the left a little bit here so that we've got more room. But we're going to say that the right hand side when we plug in n equals 0, we'll get negative 1 raised to the 0, which is just 1, so that value is going to become positive 1. 3 raised to the 2 times 0 plus 1, we get 0 plus 1, or just 3 to the first power, so we've got 3 here. x to the 2 times 0 plus 3 gives us x cubed, so we've got now 3x cubed. And then in our denominator, when we plug in 0, we'll get 2 times 0, which is 0, plus 1 is 1, so we get 1 there. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3, so we get 1 times 3 in our denominator. Now what are we going to get when we plug in n equals 1? Well, when we plug in n equals 1, we get negative 1 raised to the first power. That's going to give us negative 1. So our second term is going to be negative. We'll write a minus sign. Then we have 3 to the 2 times 1 plus 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so we have 3 cubed, 3 cubed. And then we have 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5, we have x to the 5th power. We'll get 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, times 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5, and that's the value there of our second term. Now if we keep doing this, what we'll find is that we'll get plus 3 to the 5th times x to the 7th, you can start to see the pattern here, all divided by 5 times 7. Then we're getting alternating terms here, so we'll get minus 3 to the 7th power times x to the 9th power, all divided by 7 times 9, plus dot dot dot, and we can keep writing out the terms of our series. We're going to be evaluating this on the interval 0 to 0 0.1. Now you'll remember when you evaluate a definite integral, the way that you do it is by plugging in this upper limit of integration first. We'll plug in 0 0.1 first. Then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0. We'll keep in mind that whenever we plug in 0, we're going to get 0 for every single term in our series because we'll plug in 0 here and each term will be multiplied by 0. That's going to go away. So all we really have to do is plug in 0 0.1 and find the value of our series that way. So what we're going to do is just replace each x value with 0 0.1. So we'll get equals 3 times 0 0.1 cubed. We're just replacing it everywhere we have an x variable in our series expansion here. So divided by 1 times 3 minus 3 cubed times 0 0.1 raised to the fifth power divided by 3 times 5 plus, we can write them down here, 3 to the 5th power times 0 0.1 
raised to the seventh all divided by five times seven minus three to the seventh power times 0 0.1 raised to the ninth all divided by seven times nine plus dot 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 so we can continue doing that what we want to do at this point is just use our calculator to get a decimal approximation of each term in this particular problem we were asked to estimate the value of the definite integral to six decimal places so what we want to do is continue finding a value a decimal value for each one of these terms and we'll keep adding them together or sometimes subtracting since this is an alternating series but we'll keep adding each term of the series to the terms before it until the sixth decimal place is no longer affected. So you may have to go to the seventh or eighth or ninth term before the sixth decimal place is no longer changing. Once that sixth decimal place is no longer changing, then you know that you've got an accurate estimate to six decimal places. So if we do this on our calculator, what we'll find is that this series is approximately equal to 0.000, .000 nine eight three and that's the value to the sixth decimal place right there at three so that's how you use a power series to estimate the definite integral